Let's look at an application of Stokes theorem. The Stokes theorem basically allows us to replace a line integral where we have the positive orientation, that is the counterclockwise traversal of C, with a surface integral of the curl of F. Just like with the divergence theorem, we would replace a surface integral of F with the triple integral of the divergence. So just remember that the vector calculus theorems give you options. So you can always choose the integral, which is the most easily executed. Now in this particular example, and what I want to show first is that with divergence theorem, we have a closed surface. With Stokes theorem, we do not have a closed surface. We basically have a surface that has a boundary. And in this particular case, the surface is the upper hemisphere. And so the boundary would just be the unit circle traversed with the positive or counterclockwise orientation. So just remember, divergence theorem, closed surface, Stokes theorem, non-closed surface. Now our vector field in this case is negative y plus z, comma x minus z, comma x minus y. So when we use Stokes theorem, we need the curl and we need the normal. Now just to remind you how this is similar to the calculations that we've done before is that when we compute a unit normal, it looks like this. And the element of surface area in this case looks like this. So when we compute this particular integral, the norms, just like it has done before, will absorb. And so you don't really have to compute this object because in the final analysis, it goes away. So we don't have to formally write the unit normal. So our calculations will obviously include this particular calculation, the Rx cross Ry, which we have here, and also for this computation, we need the curl. So those are the really only two things you need to focus on. And then of course, with the surface integral, we're gonna have a region. Now, when we look at the normal, we look at negative zx, negative zy comma one, a very common computation that we've done many times. And again, back to what we've done many times, we take the x partial here. Now remember, this will give us the negative x divided by the radical, but of course the negative here will remove that. And in a parallel computation, the negative zy will just be y divided by the radical, one minus x squared minus y squared. And then of course the one just comes in for free. So now what we need to do is to compute the curl of the vector field. So basically you can write it this way. You can write curl if you like, but remember this is just the Nabla operator crossed with the vector field. And so we do two, three, three, two. So two, three in this case will give us a negative one. And then three, two in this case will also give us a negative one, but we subtract, so we have negative one plus one. And then three one will give us a one, and then one three will also give us a one. One minus one, that'll give us a zero. And then lastly, one two will give us a one, and two one will give us a negative one. One minus a negative one gives us one plus one, so we get a curl of zero zero two. Now, the theorem, just like the divergence theorem, says you can replace the integral or the line integral here about C with the surface integral of the curl. And so all we have to do is fill this in, remembering, again, just like with the line integrals of vector fields, the norms here absorb. And so we get 0, 0, 2, the curl, and then, of course, we get our vector here from the normal, and when we take the dot product, the only surviving term is the two times the one. Now, of course, we wish all integrals would be this simple. So basically, we get the double integral when you factor the two of the dA computed against x squared plus y squared less than or equal to one. Well, this object here, of course, is just the area of the unit circle right here. Again, we always want our computations to be this easy. And then of course, that's just pi r squared. And so we get pi times one squared or two times pi or two pi. 
So take this example as a good introduction to Stokes' theorem and just note that the computation can be longer or shorter depending on how long it takes to compute these and then of course on the basic difficulty of the integral that you have to compute. And we are done.